Welcome to our video on lesson planning for EMI. This video will cover planning an EMI lesson and considerations to make during your lesson planning to balance the needs of subject instruction and language. Think back to what you know about backward design and how to plan your course according to the types of skills and knowledge that students need in order to succeed in their fields. So how do we start lesson planning? The first step is to look back at your student course learning objectives. Remember that these need to be observable and measurable and use verbs from Bloom's taxonomy. So let's look at this idea of observable and measurable in more detail and with specifics. Here is a sample student learning objective for a lesson that is on the water cycle. Ask yourself, is it observable and measurable? Students will understand the water cycle. Is this one observable and measurable? No, I don't think it is. We can't see someone understanding since that's an invisible process inside someone's head. And if we can't see it, we can't measure it. The problem with overly general or vague student learning objectives is that they can actually make it harder for us as instructors to make sure that we design student-centered lessons that require students to show us what they know or have learned. So let's expand this idea of observable and measurable objectives. Here's a formula to create objectives that are observable and measurable. We can create SMART objectives. SMART stands for S, specific, M, measurable, A, attainable, R, results focused, and T, time focused. Here's an example of a SMART objective. By the end of the unit, students will be able to discuss and illustrate the six parts of the water cycle of their geographic region and appropriately label each part in English. Why is this SMART? Well, specific is found with the six parts, measurable is found with discuss and illustrate, Attainable is with the geographic region. Results focused is appropriately label each part in English. And time focused is by the end of the unit. You can see that instructors and students can look at this objective and know what the expectation is. Either students can do this or they can't. So it's observable and measurable. Words to avoid in student learning objectives are understand or know. Since we can't observe or measure how well students do these things, which are internal processes. Initially, writing SMART objectives may seem like a time-consuming task. But it's time well spent. With clear objectives, we can begin to outline sections of our course and determine tasks and activities for the day's lesson. We can also use our objectives to create formative and summative assessments. So let's look at this in more detail with a specific example. The first step in lesson planning is to choose the course student learning objective that your lesson will be focusing on. The second step in lesson planning is to plan out the actual lesson. Before you plan the lesson, it is helpful to think about any difficulties students might have with the content. For example, maybe students will struggle with the key terms in English, or they might find it hard to discuss processes in a small group. In our water cycle example, we might decide that students will struggle with pronouncing the terms in the water cycle, such as precipitation and condensation, and therefore, discussing them in class will be difficult. We might also think that students will struggle with remembering the differences between these terms since they are longer words and many end in T-I-O-N. When we plan our lesson, we can think about how we can help students with these struggles. 